Hello. Welcome to the Crafty Toads podcast. This is episode six, take two. Hi. Because we didn't get to actually go the last time, so now it's up and running. Um, I am going to adjust this just a tiny little bit so that you're not cut off. That's better. Yeah. Okay. So I am Mary Beth, and um, you can find me all over Ravelry as Mary Beth 494. Um, Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook. Well, um, not what Facebook. else? Not so much Facebook. Pinterest? No, really. Well, I am on Pinterest, um, but Mary Beth 494. You can find me. It's like we haven't done this in three weeks. I know. It's crazy. Go ahead. I'm Helen. You can find me as Helen HG69 on just about everything except Periscope, where I am Reggie Tino. Okay, so it's been three weeks. It's been three weeks since our last podcast. We didn't go away or anything. Do you know it's 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 crazy? Um, and it's not meant to be like against anybody or anything like that but anytime I say it's been three weeks I want to say since my last confession <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Catholic I have never been to confession but I, I just I want to say it's been three weeks since my last it's been three weeks since the last podcast since our last uh, yarn confession there you go our, <laughs> that's it perfectly since our last yarn confession so um yes it, it was kind of a crazy time every week wait, we planned... wait wait sorry we have show notes and I have in great big red letters to oh, did in the, the intro <laughs> Because we always leave this out. We have a Ravelry page that's called The Crafty Toads. We put up show notes for each of the podcasts. We have an Ask Us Anything um, thread that we actually have to answer some questions for that. Uh, yes, maybe maybe um, you can look it up. Um, but uh, we have that and um, we have what are you reading? What are you making? That sort of thing. So come join us. Ravelry, the Crafty Totes. Okay. Um, we also have two dogs, Spike and Drusilla, who are the store dogs. And you may hear them um, in the background. Sometimes they pop their heads in, but we're not on the bench today. We're in chairs. So I'm not sure they're going to be able to come up. Although, Drew may just jump into our laps. It's a chair over there. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, where have we been? We have been here. Sewing, sewing, sewing. I wish we, we planned could say, to do it every week in the last three weeks, and it's just that this just never happened. I wish we could say that um, we have been here. places. I know we were in Australia. <laughs> there we go with, with Butch and Sundance. Sundance. Um, but anyway, we have been busy uh, filling orders for bags and running our Etsy shop and um, getting ready. We had a an arts an antique and artisan festival here in town so we were getting ready to do that so we have been doing um a lot of things we fulfilled finally finished the order for 150 bags and i'm going to try and put in a picture because we've delivered the first 50 bags and then i took a picture of the second 100 bags and um it took up quite a bit of the table yeah so we have that. Hopefully I'll be able to put the picture in. There's a huge weight off our shoulders. Yes, yes. We got to relax a little bit once that was done. Um, and now that the festival's over, we don't have anything really until July. I kind of think we have something in June, and I can't remember what it is. So we will Spike's look. trying to tell us. Um, we also took one day and went down to Baltimore because my nephew, our nephew turned two. And we went and spent the day with the nephews and their mother and father and got to um, celebrate Colin's second birthday, which was very nice. Yes, so was... hopefully we'll be able to put a picture of that in here too. Spend time with toddlers. It's really... It makes you feel young. Our brother, not the father of the children, uh, came with us and he doesn't always get to see them when we see them because he, he always work. he's always working. And... Um, Braden was so excited that Uncle Jolly came. Oh, I my mean, God. He was showing Uncle Jolly all around the house. The ants were forgotten. Right. We Completely totally forgotten. forgotten. Uh, it was all about being with Uncle Jolly. And his mother, Braden's mom, my sister-in-law, was telling me that even when my brother's not there, it's all about being with the uncle. So every little boy needs an Uncle Jolly. Yes. Especially an uncle like my brother because he's kind of awesome. So, but we did, we spent some time with family and that was great. It was such a nice way to spend a day. Yeah. So that was good. No, no knitting bags. No nope. Etsy. Nothing. Just relax. Helen is looking up the questions, yes, which I'm, is why she's not. Um, it, it seems like I'm not paying any attention, but I am. She is. 
Okay, so, um, we, oh, um, you may notice we are here in our store, which is Toad Hollow, and um, it's located in Keyport, New Jersey. It's a gift store. We're kind of switching things around and going from overall gifts, kind of pinpointing on the fabric project bags that we've been making because that's what's taking off and selling. So um, we're concentrating on that. But you may notice in the background, those of you who have, this is, um, you've come back again, we have some quilts in the background. And part of the Antique and Artisan Fair was there, they had an art walk and they displayed local artists' work in the stores. And we got a quilt maker as our artist. So this is one of Nancy Carew's um, quilts behind us. And then you can see a little bit of a sunflower quilt also. Um, and uh, if I think about it, um, if I can possibly do it, maybe I'll add a bit of video at the end that has some of her quilts in it because they're These are beautiful. Words. They're so beautiful. And if it's something that you're interested in at all, it's something you should see because she's been doing it for over 40 years and they're gorgeous. So the if I can show you. time and work is insane. So that was, um, that's why we have this beautiful backdrop. And we have to qualify that. No, we did not make that. <laughs> I wish. Everybody who came in said, oh, are you making the quilts? Yeah. <laughs> because you come in our store and the quilts are surrounding our sewing table. So you see the sewing machine set up with the quilts hanging behind us. So the, the natural uh, assumption would be that we made them. And right. It's like, yeah, nah. I wish. No, I just make bags. <laughs> yes. We'll stick with bags for now. Someday, I mean, we do want to make quilts. And yeah. Nancy has actually done quilting classes in the store. Um and we've taken some, so we do know about lining up nine squares and things like that. <laughs> not that. Not yet. Right? When? Maybe. Much rather, I'd much rather knit right now. I know, right now, right now, we're so excited about knitting that we just, every spare minute that we get, we want to knit. Boy, have we digressed. Yes. Okay. So as you play with that, would you like to explain what you're wearing? We have huh? FOs. Huh? We have FOs. This and is why we haven't podcast in three weeks, because we <laughs> No, I'm not podcasting until the show's done. I know, it's got to be finished. But you know what? I'm thinking about it. We, we really share a brain. Yes, because when you look at them. It's not exactly the same. But it is very We were similar. showing my our mom last night, and I was explaining about how, you know, Mary Beth had one pattern and I had the other, and she's like, they're not the same. I'm like, no, they're not the same. <laughs> you would think. Mine but is the Homespun House windswept shawl. Oh, it's so pretty. And it is just okay. Beautiful. Do you remember how um they when they shoot actresses and they shoot them through a veil like a gauze? gauze? This I've is got... our gauze, okay? <laughs> so it's gonna be our gauze to to highlight everything. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was uh we used I used Wonderland yarns. It was a packet that came with uh, mini skeins of all these colors, and. I am so thrilled. I can't tell you. I know exactly where all the problems are. Um, one of them is is right here. Um, but, but if you still, don't, know, if you don't know it, it's just and I love it. I'm not sure ultimately how I feel about the pico bind off. Um, not only knitting it, just for my personal taste, the look of it, but it just makes it very pretty and very feminine. Do you remember what your colorway was called? It was the dark rainbow. Okay, it's the Cheshire Cat dark rainbow. And I'm pretty sure the Cheshire Cat is. I think those are the the, the weight, the packets. Oh, is that what you I think? think it I think okay. it's the weight. That's okay. what they call this particular weight. Uh, fingerling, 100% uh, superwash merino. It is an absolute dream to work with, but it's very very thin fingerling. Um, I think it's fingering. 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 I always say fingerling too, but I'm. I think it may be fingering. Yeah, I'm going with potatoes, aren't I? Fingerling potatoes. Whatever. I know. Anyway, it's we're knitting sock potatoes. <laughs> Um, We're so good. We take potatoes and make it into this. <laughs> and it's just, it. after you block it, I mean, it was soft to begin with, but we blocked it with right. our, our wool wash. Oh my God, it's so soft. And it feels like a cloud. It does. It's so light. But it, it feels like you warm. Are, I know. Because I got to tell you, I'm a little. You know what? But it's comfortable. It's comfortable. It's it, comfortable it sits very comfortably warm. on your neck because it's so light. soft and light. Yeah. But it's warm. It's approximately 80 degrees outside. And muggy. So I'm going to put the wool back around my neck. What are you wearing? I am wearing 
A homespun house's whispering pine shawl. I am making, I made, not I'm making, I made, um, a homespun house's the whispering pine shawl. Look at that lace. I know there's a lot of lace. This is my first lace that I did. That's mine. Was, let me shoot ourselves too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I really I think. Will... It's... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I also used Wonderland yarn. Mine was jar, uh, the Dark Jewels, I think, or Jewels Part 1 or something like that. But um, they have on their website all the different mini skein packs that you can get for the Wonderland yarn. And seriously, we'll I put just a link, want right? them all. Yeah, we'll try and remember to put a link, but I want them all because they're so pretty. But there's my lace. And then I used all five colors. Um, I love how you just did the bind off in, yeah, in dark blue. It's so, so pretty. And when you wear it, you get all the colors up around your face. And it's so funny because it's so, they're both very light and feminine. And one of our works in progress is a shawl, but completely the opposite. Oh, yes. Yes. So. This is much thicker and chunkier. We were doing this before we started and it's, trying to figure you, this out. If you don't podcast, sit in front of your computer or a camera and record yourself trying <laughs> to do it because it's all backwards. And it's like you're five and you're trying to figure out which yeah, hand really. is which. And it's, it's, you feel like there's I had the something benefit a of an bit. editing moment where I got to put mine back <laughs> on. Something a little bit wrong with you. So should we talk about what we're drinking? Yes. Same old, same old. Same old iced tea. Um, however, it's very nice because it is a little warm in here today. Okay. And our store, we have, uh, obviously, we have air conditioning in our store, um, but it sounds like a jet engine, So, we, which you will probably find out during the summer because we will not be able to live without it. But right. if we can podcast without it, it's much less distracting. Yes. Since it's right up there. So, cheers. Happy three weeks. Okay. So. Whips. FOs are done. Moving on that to whips. That was fast. You would think we would have more after three weeks, but we could show. We you have. We're going to show we you have some a, bags. A ton of FO bags that were delivered and yep, sold and delivered we, again. We and did um, three different yarn shops that mm -hmm. we delivered bags to, made and delivered bags to. One of them, Chelsea. Hi, Christina, because she watches. Um, we've delivered more than once. Going. She's Chelsea Yarns in Colts Neck, and that's just an ego trip for the two of us. Oh my gosh. We go in, we bring our bags, and we, um, she put in an order for a lot of bags last time, and we, we told her we can get you 10 next week because we were preparing for the festival, and then we'll get her the rest afterwards, which we have to work on this week. But we brought the 10 in. She had a store full of people. We put the bags on the table, and it was a feeding frenzy. Before we left, two of them had been paid for. And sold, and two others were set aside for somebody right. else. And they were gone the next day. She said, I'm not even going to let people know that they're here because they won't be here by the time they make them in. I know somebody that we met at the Artisan Festival um, who actually came to find us, which was really kind of nice. Hi, Miriam. Yeah, it was so sweet that uh, somebody came actually to find us at the festival. But um, she said by the time she got there the next night, they were all gone. So uh, she came to uh, our booth and bought two for herself. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Just come straight to the source. So, um, whips. Moving on to whips. Okay. Should I go first? I have more than you. Yes, you do. You should. You should do your, your maybe your socks first. first. These are in my periodic table project bag. And I have to get hold on. I forget what the name of them are. Wildflowers and honeycomb socks. And they're a little bit of lace work, which I've never done in a sock before. So they are my contribution to the Grocery Girls Fancy Feet Sock Cow. I'm going to put them into Dad Another Day Summer of Socks Cow. And I suggested I that believe... she might want to make one for me, but she decided that she is no. making them all for herself. I am. Okay. Uh, do you know I who believe... it's buying? 
the bakery bears oh. uh, are starting tomorrow a summer of socks as well. Are they so, really? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to triple dip these babies. I got new glasses. They're red with polka dots. So, uh, Olive Olivia Villarreal. Villarreal. Yep. Olivia Vill Villarreal is the one who uh, created the pattern. Carry on. I am using. Uh, I got a scan of a skein. A scan. A skein of Happy Feet yarn is from Peru, from Chelsea Yarns, um, one of our first trips there, and it's the lipstick colorway, which is the pink. The green is from our stash, but since the yarn is so speckled, you can barely see my honeycomb. I'm wondering if you're having a yarn that's that speckled, if a vanilla sock is the way it's to go. It's probably the best, yeah. Either that or one of those that are um, like I'm putting up. The, the lines of, um, it, you just basically knit pearl. A you, you, you rib it all the way yeah. down type of thing. Um, or maybe a cable. Maybe. Not smaller yeah. patterns. Also, this um, I'm using size 2. Higher, higher sharps, US2, higher, higher sharps, which is what I have used for socks before, and it's fine, 64 stitches. This is thicker yarn, so I'm going to have very baggy socks. But you can still give them to me if you don't want them. And I tried something new. I cast on and did one row with the lipstick and then went into the green for the cuff, and I'll do the heels and toes in the green as well. Is this the one that you did the twisted rib for? Yeah. So it's a twisted rib... Which is a bit of a pain in the neck to knit, but I love how it looks. It's very pretty. So I have about a half a sock. Not even, because I'm not to the heel yet. I was going to say, oh, I have about a quarter of a sock. It's going to be a teeny tiny sock. <laughs> it's an ankle sock. Yeah, uh, I know, but you're going to have that much for your foot. Your no, foot. That's... No, I'm saying oh, if that's oh, you. Oh, half of it, yeah. No. So about a quarter of the way there. I got to knit a lot at the festival the other day. It's beautiful yarn to knit with. Happy feet. Um, beautiful colors. Beautiful colors. It's very pink. Um, Little pink for me. But I, I really kind of like it. I love it with the green. And uh, I'm really going to have to make sure I wear something that shows my socks off. Luckily, we have a lot of that when green. Because I want to get yeah. a color that's like um, the deep, dark pink and do watermelon oh, okay. socks. Yeah. Maybe even do watermelon stripey socks. That'd be cool. That would be very cool. Throw a couple black speckles in. Yeah. Every now and then. Oh. Rude boy. Oh my God, Spike, just Spike just burped. burped. <laughs> Somebody, we, we read He's an article. He's such a teenager. That said when dogs burp, it means they're saying they love you. Well. Spike loves you. Spike Rude loves everybody. He's a, He's a goofball. Okay. Second sock? Socks? Yeah, do your other sock. Okay. Because so. the other two are pretty much we're the knitting very thing. similar things. These are you. I showed these last time, and I really have to get used to get into putting progress keepers on. These are my Dumbledore Christmas stockings, and these are the ones that I uh, started first. These are my first two at a time socks, and I am just about ready to turn my heel. So those are very pretty. The pattern is showing up very nicely. Yeah. I think it's because there's not so much speckling. I think that's the thing. The speckling. It's, it's more of a striping right. than a speckling. Because you see the blue. is It's just it's really very, very pretty. Yeah. And I love it with the pink. So the blue is from Amanda, right? Yes. Our sister gave us sock yarn for Christmas. and it's... So that's that. And then the pink is from your stash? The pink is from my stash. It was for... I bought... Five or six skeins of it, and I was using it with a white and um, double knitting for a sweater, which I scratched, and I now have all the yarn. So, very pretty Dumbledore Christmas stockings. Now, are these twisted rib too, or are they just straight rib? Straight rib, two by two. Two by two. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. I think two by two is better than one by one. Oh, it went so much faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so those are my socks. Okay, so you could enter them and everything too, couldn't you? No, because everybody wanted you to. Those all wanted you to start. Maybe the bakery bears because they said if you're 50, less than fifty percent done, which okay. just means to the yield. 
Okay. You can do it. So I have not done a pair of socks. A pair of socks yet. I'm not taken with socks. You have to finish your first pair. I know. But because you, know you want to wear them. I do. I just want somebody to make them. Oh, here, for me. give me my pair. I um And I'm not I, making you socks. No, I know. You're very very I put mean. all that effort in. I very might give mean. you one pair, but I'm I want to have my handmade socks first. I um love knitting shawls. Yeah. I have decided I'm just knitting shawls. But I'm always going to have a pair of socks going on. At least one pair. I really should do it because I got beautiful yarn to do a pair of socks. And um, we bought I mean, the other yarn and it's just... You started your heel for your Hermione's, right? Yes. Yes, I did. So you should just pick it up every morning. Yeah. Instead of doing a shawl. I have no idea where it is. I have to find it. Okay. What are you working on? All right. I am going to start with my Pebbles one? Beach. Okay. Um, this is the Pebble Beach Shawl. It is by Carrie's Handmade. And I actually am doing the Pebble Beach Shawlette. That's what it looks like. Only mine doesn't look anything like that. Because mine is so pretty. So pretty. So the butterfly is where I was the last time we uh, podcast. So I've come this far. Um... I am doing this in Sweet Sparrow Yarns. It is, I'm doing it in her nut hatch um, base. It's a fingering base. And it is called Crocuses. It is absolutely, the colorway is gorgeous. It's just so pretty. And the pattern is really, really pretty. Lots of fun to knit, And you too. love working with with the yarn, right? Yes, I do. The uh, The yarn is an absolute dream to knit. It's gorgeous. So. It feels different than mine. It doesn't have um, Stellina. Yeah. So mine is a, I'm pretty sure I'm 75-25 or 80-20. It's a merino nylon mix. I may be 80-20 and I think you're 80 20 and 80 no I'm 70, 75 25 75, 75 20 25. and 5 okay so i'm probably 75 25 yeah or 80 20 one or the other anyway um just really spectacular it's got purples and greens and golds and it just is so beautiful to work with show your ball That's my wound ball. I love it. And I am doing this. I, I, I know um, in other podcasts we said that we didn't want to spend the money on needles, that we were going to use regular needles that you could get from Joann's or Michael's or whatever and spend the money on yarn. Um, and then, and then one pair. I got a pair of Chagos. Chagos? Chagos. Chagos. And I am doing this on size 6 Chagos. The difference is huge. <laughs> I now know why you pay more money for the Chowkoos than you do for, you know, like the three ninety nine pair you get at Michael's. Because it's such a difference. Really, really such a I difference. Mean, it goes faster and it doesn't split your yarn. And the thing the I notice it the most is at the join. The join yeah. Because I would be just pushing and pushing. To, and I thought it was because I knit so tightly, but I'm not knitting any looser on these. And... It's just, it's sliding right off. It's great. So I, I am, I'm a convert. I yep. now understand the, the reason behind the, we have our a, expensive needles. a list of our future projects and uh, next to them, that list is the list of needles we have to buy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that we make sure that we get the right ones. But um, yeah, no, these are really lovely to work with. So that is my Pebble Beach shawl. So my, this is my Sweet Sparrow yarn. <laughs> And mine is on her magpie base. It's called Pure Reason. And as we said, it's 75, 20, and 5. So it's mm. got the Stellina in it. And it's this lovely mint green, would you call it? It's like a minty green. With blues and purples. But a cr almost a cream oh, in there, there too. Yeah, you're starting to get the blues and the purples. Hit two, excuse God me. Bless you. Thank you. And you can see the Stellina. Um, and this is, I had a couple weeks ago shown 
that I had started the blight shawl because I had seen someone on the New Jersey wool walk uh, wearing it and I thought it was so pretty. Sorry, that's pattern. You can't see pattern. So I went and found the pattern and I bought it and I started it and I totally screwed it up. So I took it out and I started again. Okay, so here's a picture. They've got a picture on the bottom of it. Oh, okay. What it's going to look so like. So it's the Blight and it is by um, Oblivious Knits. Um, and what it is, is it's all leaf patterns in there. Very lacy. Um, but you can see right here. Do you want me a whole part of it? No, I'm just trying to show the leaf right. pattern. It's really, I mean, it's a ton of yarn overs and slip knit two togethers. It's my Have Chelsea. you done your yarns? Have Super you fucker. done uh, yarn over and then knit two together? I do yarn over, slip a stitch, knit two together, and slip the slip right. stitch okay. over. Because um, I'm doing some that are slip a stitch or um, s yarn over and then knit two together, which is just... And then there are times where you're doing it actually into a yarn over from the from the row previous. Before. Yeah, it's just it's like okay, <laughs> you got yarn sliding all over the place. You do. You just have to make sure that it's going in the right spot. But this is this is my blight. This is where I am so far. It's fun to knit. The yarn is really really fun to knit with. But to feel it, how it's different than yours. Oh yeah, it's a little bit stiffer. Yeah, I think it's the Selena. Yeah, so. beautiful. That's where I am. Really really beautiful. Okay, next whip in uh, work in progress. I had started this in a worsted weight, and this is the Drakenfell shawl that we're doing. And I was like Sue from Legacy Knits and whatever Mary Beth knits. I have to now knit. So. I had started this and I showed it. It was in with yellow yarn, and I had just added the brown as my second color. But it was very stiff. It wasn't the way I it wanted wasn't it. Wasn't draping at all. Right. It wasn't what I ex expected. So um, I frogged it, took it out, and I went and got a DK knit instead. Instead of doing just worsted, I got the DK. And this is where I am with mine. That's not the right way. That's, that's the, right the wrong side. side. That's the right side. Look how pretty that is. It's still. And that is so not much... white. It looks like it, your second color is white. You pull it up because it's a light blue. Like there a gray go. blue. But um, it's it's much thicker and not as airy fairy as all the lace that I'm doing yeah. and everything else because the Pebble Beach and the Whispering Pines all had lace as part of it. And this is. But it's soft and squishy. Garter. I mean, it's just knit. Pretty much the whole way. Oh my God, it's so fast in it. Right. If you just if you take the time and Basically, don't fall asleep. You are knitting and on certain rows you knit the front, the back, and the front of one stitch and then knit to the end and knit two together. And then the next row is all knit. And it's just knit, 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 knit. Which is really a lot of fun to do. Great for doing in the car. I did a whole section in the car. Yesterday. I know that's why you're so much further than yeah. I am, because I do all the driving. So this is me. But it was a 45 minute ride and I did. And that's how it is. I did all. I also knit, not nearly, I, you knit much tighter than I do. I so do. mine looks bigger. So, because you are about here. So I'm about a section ahead of you. Yes. And you can see, hold yours up. Okay. Where I screwed mine up. Oh, uh, right. Okay. See this here is supposed to be all dots. Like we were trying dots. to figure out who did it right. Right, and then we, and to, actually, we went to the pattern. I took, I got through. <laughs> she just assumed I was right. And went back and took out three whole rows of stitching, which, I mean, it's not that much. It's only like Especially 80 since stitches or something. Stitches easy, but, but it was taking out, and I mean, some of them are, you're carrying the stitch up two extra um, rows. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, I went back and took out three whole rows and got myself back down again and started up again. And it came out exactly the same. And I, my friend, out, I was right the whole time and she was wrong. So I am to the point of doing this row again right now. 
And I think it's going to, I figured it out last night that it's actually going to turn out correctly. Like okay. yours. So. Excellent. But this is my Drake and Rose. It is so much fun to knit. It is. It's, it's really, it's a great shawl to knit. I love And I Melanie love this Berg's. yarn. I, I have saved, if you go into my Ravelry page, um, I have <laughs> every, everyone. pretty much every one of her shawls saved. I adore her shawls. Yeah. I just want to knit all of them. I just have to wait until I finish one before I can start another one because to buy the yarn. I have to buy the yarn and you know find the time. And I'm doing so. it on the Spice Market next, I think. Are you really? Thank yeah, you. I think I might. Either that or the Joker and the Thief, but I think the Spice Market. They're beautiful. I just love them all. So, Melanie, so Berg, I'm just, just on the plain tops all winter next week. chance that you watch our show. Our show. <laughs> she might. We're in we her love. Uh, this isn't her knit along, by the way. She's doing her annual shawl knit along. Shawl knit along. So we are both entered um, with our dragon. We love your patterns. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. I just can't wait to see how it turns out. I know. And this is Barocco DK. DK. Do I have? Tag? I should oh, have. I, I tried I, to nope. start saving the tags. Here we Tag go for my project bag. Nope, that's the other one. Here, this is. I don't have one. That's where you need it. Okay, so that's not right. That's the old one. Wait a minute. I have this is my magic. But I have a lot in here. Jeez, what what a, don't I have in here? Do you know what I don't have in here? The label for the yarn. Tag for the yarn that I'm using. It's Barocco DK Vintage Nid. DK, I Vintage think is DK. what it's called. You just spun mine. Did, did you keep the thing? I thought I threw it back in there so that we could have it. Okay. Oh, oh well. All right. Well, anyway. Um, you use three different colors, and you have different I colors have, of pinks and purples, right? I have the plum, and then this one is a, a very light blush. I don't know what it comes up. Pink. Um, and then I have a uh, brighter pink as my third color. I have the darker blue, the gray blue. And then I think you have a bright blue, right? I think I have a brighter blue. I have no idea. It's not in my bank, so it's I don't know. It's a surprise. It will be. I bought it. I have it all ready to go. Yeah, we have all we need. So it is. Anyway. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. So that is, those are our works in progress, our whips. All right. So future projects, I think, is next on I think the list, so. right? All right. So what are we going to be doing? We are going to be having a summer knit along between the two of us because we're going to be knitting the same things. Yeah. Anybody who would like to join in, feel yes. free. We'll put a, oh. we'll start a, a knit along in our store, just a summer knit along, whatever you're knitting. Okay. Right. That Maybe works. there'll be prizes. There'll definitely be prizes. Invite friends. We'll yeah. need a lot of entries. Okay. For prizes. So, so. how about a, a summer sweater? Obviously, we're making this up as we go along. Uh, completely. <laughs> she just sprang this on me. I thought she was going to do, we're going to do a summer knit along, and if you want to knit the same sweater, but. Um, well, let's make it broad. Okay. Summer sweater. Summer sweater. Anybody knitting a sweater this summer? Join our, Join our, our knit along. We're, we're doing a knit along, though. Starting in June. Really? Yeah, she hasn't said anything. Okay. So we'll get in touch with her again. Yeah, we're supposed week. to be doing We're supposed one. to be co-hosting a knit along, but I don't know whether we are. We have to get in touch with Vegan Jillian and say, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure we are. She said something. She said, okay. Here we are whispering to each other. The secrets we keep. Okay. Let's get Future projects. That. Future projects. Summer knit along. Okay. Toad all oh, crafty toads. Crafty toads. Knit along. Knit a sweater. Yeah. I don't care what it is. Just knit yep. a sweater. Just, we'll, we'll I just have, have one thread such an itching to be knitting a sweater. a sweater. I have so many things that I'm working on because I've also got a hat somewhere and at least one pair of socks. I have yarn for several different things. Yeah. Nope. One in a sweater. And a new sweater where we have to go buy yarn for it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not these two. Not the first two. <laughs> Terrible. We're going to test out knit picks. Maybe. Yes. Maybe next week we'll have something to say about that. <laughs> However, shall we get to the sweater? Yes. Because right. we're going to have three entries. <sighs> go ahead. Here we go. Knock yourself out. <laughs> we participated in a mini skein swap. And having finished our shawls, we have mini skeins to go with it. So 
We're going to do something with our minis. Like a cowboy bandana. Okay. So we're going to do something with our minis. And um, we've decided that we don't want to do the cozy blanket that everybody's doing because we feel the need to branch out and be different. We're rebels. Well, now we don't have that many minis. We yeah. don't. Also, I want to do something other than just knit a square. Yeah. So we are knitting. Plus we have always wanted the sweater. Right. We're going to do ours as a Mrs. Weasley sweater and take all our minis and knit them into a sweater. Just reach into the box, grab Whatever a comes mini, next. doesn't pull it matter. Out, knit it into the pattern. Yep. Grab the next mini. Make sure along. you save half so that you can pass it to the person right. sitting to your right. And you <laughs> <laughs> share. Um, but anyway, we are going to be knitting a sweater, and we thought a Mrs. Weasley cardigan sweater would be perfect. Now, it's not going to look like the picture because um, it's going to be much more mishmash. <laughs> There's no way that we're going to be that organized. You know, yep. What we are going to do is we are just going to And we're not going to have minis. a main color anymore. Right. It's, it's just, just minis and knit it up. Although, because um, this one has the main color going down around the collar and coming down and the ribbing. And I'm wondering if we want to do that. If we want to do pick a I think color. What I'm definitely going to do is I'm, I'm going to do the button ribbing in, in one color. Well, I'm thinking maybe do the ribbing again off the cuff because this is how we roll um do the cr the ribbing oh yeah maybe the ribbing and the sleeve ribbing. and the sleevey ribbing and then the buttonhole cuff all, all the way and just do those in one color and then once you start doing the bands of color that's when you pick up the minis and just start throwing them in what do you think well you don't do the ribbing until the last thing right on all of them so that it's so you're just starting with minis starting with minis because we're pretty sure we're doing this top top down, down. top down it's, it's just with a quick perusal of the pattern, it looked kind of confusing. But we'll figure it out. Right. We're intelligent. But between us, we should share at least one brain, you know, <laughs> so um, we should be able to do this. And you just look up things that you don't understand. That's the way we... So, if you would like to take your minis and start a mini, uh, Mrs. Weasley sweater, come We're doing us. the Lifesavers. Yep. It is by... And I'm getting more minis. Tannis Lavely. Tannis Fiber Arts. So that's what we're going to do because how cool is it to have a Mrs. Weasley card game? Yeah. All right. And so I'm getting, we both have joined uh, a mini swap. Grocery Girls and um, Legacy Knits co hosted a mini swap, which we have both joined. And I lost my partner, but I found a new one. Uh, I am floating in the wind. I don't have I my Tina. partner. Um, she's from the UK. And we're both very excited. We're going to be sending each other treats and stuff. So I should be getting more minis that I can add to my sweater. Yes. We saw yeah. a picture of Tina. Tina, if you're watching. You're us. On the other side of the pond. Right. So if you ever do make it to the United States, call us. We'll set you up. Yep. You can come stay with us. Because, so. you know, you've got the, the animals. The dogs and the right cats. In. You'll fit right in. <laughs> It's just throw another person <laughs> on the fire, you know. Um, so, yeah, no, it's um, I'm, I'm waiting to hear back. To see if I get another partner, because my first partner never answered. So I'm hoping I get another partner. If not, if there's somebody out there who wants to do a mini skein swap with Mary Beth, contact I'm us. feeling very left She's out. Really, <laughs> She's feeling like the last picked on the paper. I, I like, am. <laughs> that's, that's it exactly. You know, it's like nobody wants to find. And we send good, good swap packages, people. We do. People. Okay, can't people, do that. People. You can't do that anymore. We send very good swap packages. Yes. We don't tell project bags. Don't tell. You're giving everything away. So, okay. We're also inordinately fond of chocolate. Would you like to tell them exactly <laughs> what they're getting? <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so. Moving next, on. For our uh, summer sweater, because, you know, summer is so far away and we have plenty of time to knit <laughs> some sweater. Okay, this started with, this started six weeks ago. We got cotton yarn. And we decided we were going to make a cotton sweater because the warm weather was coming and we wanted to have something nice that we made that we could wear. My cotton yarn. It's not even wound yet. It is still in its skin. You know, I'm picking However, this out of my bag that has my... Um, oh, it's all very similar colors. It's all the same color. It's just one is cotton and one is um, uh, merino. But these are going to be my colors that I'm going to do. I'm not sure how I'm doing it. 
We have to figure that. No, we said. Would you like to show them the pattern that we're making? Because <laughs> I'm really jumping the gun here. Okay. Go ahead. So Meredith found. Who did? It was I Eden Yarn no Fest, idea. right? It was Eden Yarn Fest. It was on Instagram. Okay. It was the Instagram post. And she sent it to me and she said, Ed, why don't we use this sweater for our cotton sweater? Because that's part of the problem is one from week to week, we we have a different sweater we're doing. So we finally got our act together and we had a moment to breathe with making the bags. And we we bought some down, sweater patterns and, and our sweater actually patterns. printed them out. And now, damn it, we're doing it. <laughs> you have now woken up the dogs and they will stop barking. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Anyway. You're also completely mocking me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming out of the ether. Okay, anyway. <laughs> We're so, doing The Tiny Shoots by Kate. I'm reading this backwards. Kate Weppel? Heppel. Sorry, Kate. Kate Heppel. And it is a very nice, light, pretty sweater. I have Perfect decided summer. that when I am finished knitting this, I'm going to look like her. I'm going to look like her. I'm going to lose a whole bunch of weight and about Dye 30 hairs hair. <laughs> and look totally indifferent. Indifferent? And slouchy. But that is what I'm going to look Speaking like when I'm done. Speaking of keeping your colorways the same. I am... I'm looking to see if there's a picture of it and there isn't. It has a really, really pretty pattern around the top that's a little bit of lace work that's going to be so pretty. So these are my colors. And the main color is going to be the pink. It's kind of a mauve. It looks way Pull too... Back. Still too light. And purpley. There's more pink in it. Yeah. Maybe get it closer? That's better. Okay. Okay, so that's your pink. Fire Angel Red. That's going to be your accent. And it is uh, modern, Barocco modern cotton is... And what I am going to do... There's a slight bit of ribbing around the sleeves and the bottom, and that's going to be my red. And then I am haven't decided whether I'm going to do the first... You start... I was reading the pattern. You start by knitting four rows. You knit four rows. Okay. So maybe I'll do that in the red. Do that in the red and then go into the lace. Because it's a top-down sweater. Pink. So I think what I'm going to do is... I'll, so I'll do that. I'll do the first couple rows in the neck. You can't even see what I'm putting up. The first couple rows in the neck, in the red, the ribbing on the sleeves and the bottom in the red, and then everything else in the pink. And I'm going to do the same thing, only I'm going to be doing it in this bluey gray. And then that. They look so much bluer than they are. Brighter. It's beautiful blue. It is. It's really, and it's really, really nice. Yeah. You would. Th I'm. I'm really. When we pick our next set of yarn, if I say I'm going to get this and if it has anything blue in it, maybe you steer me in a different direction. But it's going to be like me with purple and pink. Yeah, because it seems to be, I seem to be doing a I, lot I've, of blue. I, I gravitate towards green immediately. And I tell myself I can't do green because I have a, I always go green. And I what never, if you I green? never go green. <laughs> what if you hit green? You have nothing. Green. Right. right. So, so um, and of course, since we share a brain, we're both going to be doing this. So, so summer sweater. two entries into our summer sweater. Along. Oh, there we there go. go. We win. <laughs> Boom. Done. We only win if we actually cast on both of them. I think we should. I don't think we can win unless we actually finish them. Yes. But at least we will. Well, not the we maybe. Maybe, maybe not the lifesavers because hopefully we'll just be continuing and I don't think to gather. If we're doing a summer sweater knit along, do you have to finish? With vacations and everything, just join and just knit join. during. The oh, summer. for you, yeah. for you guys, you just have to join yeah. and show us some some knitting. With us, since it's a summer sweater, I'm thinking maybe we should finish. I'm kind of hoping I want to be done by the end of June. Yeah, the so summer we can one. actually not the wear Mrs. It. Mrs. Weasley's going to take forever because we we don't have that many minis. Right, we just have to wait and join. And as we get when minis, we'll right. add to it. So. Which means you're going to have to start knitting socks because you're going to need minis. I have minis for my shawls. Mm. You guys need socks. I will. I'm not going to share my sock minis with you until you start knitting socks. Be that way. What? Be that way. <laughs> okay. So, next sweater. Next sweater. Okay. These this are. This one our... we don't have the yarn for. No. These are our Rhinebeck sweaters, right? Yep. Okay. Show so. away. Mine is going to be. Oh, it's Hannah Fettig. Uh, the Coastal Pullover. And I don't know what color I'm doing. 
because I go back and forth. I have a yarn. I think I'm going to do Knit Picks Tweed. Yarn. Worsted. 100% worsted. It's worsted, uh, merino wool, and it's got a tweed to it. Right. I just haven't picked my color yet. And then that's going to be, uh, it's going to be like me picking up a menu when I'm in a restaurant. Talk to me when you're actually ready for me at the moment for me it to will actually change. place the order because okay, it will change so constantly. Right now we have down that it's World of the Andes Tweed oh, that's in the, Worsted. Uh, right. That's the brand. And I just have to pick the color. Right. Hopefully by next week, we'll we will at least have the color chosen and ordered. It may not be here yet. So. I am going to be doing the Irish coffee sweater by Baby Cocktails. And I'm wondering if she gives a full on. There you go. There's the back. Here's a picture of the back. These are pay for pattern, so we can't show you too much. That's what the back looks like. And then the front. All that cabling you're gonna have to do. I know this is. I'm the cabling queen. She hates, hates it. cable, but I love the look of it. So I will put up with cabling. That's what the front's gonna look like. It is so pretty. It's gonna be so pretty with your Rhinebeck shawl. Yeah. Where I might that? want to work on that. <laughs> it's next to the couch. Okay. I know exactly where that one is. Just haven't done anything on it recently. Um, but. Uh, so that's going to be my sweater. You, as our podcasting viewing audience, can now track us. We have listed three. Three different sweaters Three each. different sweaters that we have said are our future projects and we are casting on immediately. Two of them we um, are casting on immediately. How many will they be cast on next week? I say we go for two. Okay. Two will be cast on next week. And the third will be ordered. Okay. Two cast on, third ordered. There Bam. you go. Bam. Done. Done. Mic drop. Walk walk. Okay. Alrighty. We better stop this podcast. Right. <laughs> At least making bags so we can pay for the yarn, yarn. for the new sweaters. <laughs> okay. Um. So uh, we mentioned that we've been doing lots and lots of sewing, and we have um, been making lots of bags. Um, we'd love to show you some. However, most of them have gone out the door. We will show you. Hopefully next week we're going to have some actually listed in our store so that when we show them to you, you have some place to go and see them. Yeah. So um, we're going to work very hard to try and get that done. And it's just we've been fulfilling wholesale orders, um, which we will continue to do. And But now that the that first glut is over, right. we're going to focus this week on getting some of ours done. Because also we have been selected to... Um, be at the Monmouth County Fair. Oh, that's right. Which is a big deal. Yes. Uh, Made in Monmouth, we've mentioned before, we were supposed to do their uh, spring show and the fire ruined that for us. And they have been very gracious and allowed us, um, they have given us the booth for Thursday and Friday night of the Monmouth County Fair, which is July, I believe it is the 28th and 29th. What they um, do is they take one of the booths at the fair, made in Mammoth. Huge, like, circus-sized tent. Right. And they split it up into sections, and then they have 10 or 12 vendors who make things in Mammoth County. You get to pick nights that you get to, or they pick nights for you that you get to come and take a table within the booth. And we don't have to pay anything. It is so, it's such a great organization because they are so, um, they just are so, um, they think it's so important to get the names out of people who are creating things in Monmouth County. Yeah. And the Monmouth County Fair is huge. It's like a county I mean, fair anywhere. You know, yeah. it's enormous. I mean, the, the audience that you have pouring through there on a nightly basis is just insane. Right. So, um, and to get a booth, it's, what did we figure? It was... We had looked into a 10 by 10 and it was, I believe, close to $1,000 for the For four the days. week. For the five, four or five days. And here we're going to have two nights where we have a table and we don't have to pay anything because this organization yeah. is helping everybody out. So generous. It's so nice of them. So we um, will be there Thursday and Friday night. And they gave us two nights, right? They gave us two and nights. they gave us Friday night, which is just oh my God, awesome. Amazing. So we have to make a lot of it. <laughs> we have to do a lot. Um, so that we're going to be working towards that. And then also we have a booth at the New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival. Yep. So that's in September, September 10th and 11th. And again, we're going to have to have tons of bags ready for that. 
because that is our core audience right there. Yeah. That is and, who we're uh, aiming for. We're going to be next to marinated yarns, and we're talking about kind of sharing displays a little bit. Right. Because so. she makes gorgeous yarn really yeah. beautiful yarn so we'll have her some of her yarn in our bags and her ba our bags in her booth and it'll yeah. be cool so. yeah lots of bags to make and also we want to get them online and get that going right so, right so that you can actually if you so choose purchase we, one and people have asked us you know where can um we see the bags other than the podcast and um we keep saying oh go to our website but they're not there yet so that's something that we're really going to try and get done um get them up and listed and pictured and that sort of thing all right Should so before quickly before that um acquisitions you want to talk about what you got oh yes we have did you bring them i did oh that was so smart of you um we have no real acquisitions we have not bought any yarn recently Past and we weeks. have been in a lot of yarn stores. This is this will be a testament of how busy we've been no sewing because yeah. we did not buy any yarn. And we had to no wait. We did buy yarn for my mom. Oh, we did for Mother's Day. For Mother's Day, we for my brothers mom. to give her. Um, because she got a gorgeous knitting bag and she needed a uh, yarn to go in. Yes. Yes. Um, however, I have joined knit alongs. We have played the lottery. We do 50-50s. We do Chinese auctions, blah, 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 blah. We never, never. win anything. She never. wins occasionally. No. When did I win? You won at the dog, at the uh, the volunteer dinner. <gasps> oh, that's right. I did. Um, okay. Anyway, now we're, we're, we're just not lucky like that. No. Um, we know someone, he goes on cruises, he wins new cruises, he wins a five, he sits down on a slot machine and wins $5,000. Um, we're not like that at all. Nope. So, um, I joined the Knitter's Pride Angela Tong pattern knit along. Um, and, uh, sorry. Okay. Um, the phone was ringing. <laughs> but it's taken care of. Um, anyway, I joined the Angela Tong knit along. I would show you the pattern, um, and the hat that Excuse I was me. knitting. It was the Kishigawa hat, I believe. I think so. Um, I've lost my project bag with it. I have no idea where it is. Um, anyway, I won something. Well, this is leading up to. I she entered won. a knit along for something that she didn't finish. Just a uh, and she won. And I won. And what and did she I won win? A huge thing. A I won huge thing. A set of Knitter's Pride Marbles interchangeable needles. This is insane. So on the one chance that I win something, I win a big one. It's a good thing to and have. It, it is. It's, because um, I can tell you, <laughs> on our list of, of um, needles that we need to get, we have set of five use marbles, set of six use marbles. <laughs> we don't have to buy them because we have them. And look how pretty they are. I have no idea what they're going to be like to knit with because I, so I I pref, uh, always usually knit with the, the the nickel needles, but people have raved about them, so I can't wait to try them. Um, and it's sizes four through eleven, so I get a size four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten and a half, and eleven. Um, and I get all the and look at the cables; they're all colored. How cool is this? I'm so excited. It's very, so, very cool. And it comes in a beautiful little pouch. It's like a little leather pouch. You, and you know what it is? That's nice because then you can take it with you. Yeah. Um, it's not all over the place. You can stick it in a knitting bag and you can always have them so that if you decide on the fly that you want to start something, you're ready to deals. go. Yep. That's so, very cool. Now my question is, when the interchangeables, how come they don't do the lower needle sizes? I if don't. If anybody knows, let us know. Is it because... the the needles are so thin the joint doesn't work. I'm just curious. But I have never seen interchangeables with the hmm. the sock sizes. So. Okay. Very exciting. So, Yay, Knitter's Pride. Yeah. I, um, when we were, when the phone was ringing before, I remembered something that we wanted to talk about. Um, the phone? No. We had a medium come in and do a seance for Friday the 13th was Friday the 13th and we had a medium who lives right around the corner from us. She does readings in the store periodically and she came in and did a seance and there were 13 of us plus her. So there were actually 14, but um, we sat around the table and she, she said, I was very concerned about this. 
If you wanted to get up and move, you had to knock three times on the table to let them know that you were moving because evidently the spirits were going to be all around us. Um, Keyport is known for being, there are a lot of haunted places in Keyport. It's a very old town, so um, old is in American standards. Not Canterbury old. No, not nearly <laughs> Canterbury old. But, um, well, I mean, actually, I think yeah, the native population would think it was old. Yes. However, um, lots the of Yankees ghosts floating who came around. and took over. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, um, lots of ghosts floating around. And it turns out we have a ghost that lives at our store or is at our store a lot. Her name is Sarah. Yep. And she watches us sew. She thinks we're artists. Yes. And she considers herself an artist and she sewed and she lived a couple of doors down and she died, we think maybe in 1912 or maybe 1921. Because we found us, we, we did a little bit of research and we found a Sarah who was married to a John. Because the medium told us. Stable. Yeah, the, she, <laughs> she, there was something about the stables. The, oh, the carriage house. The no. carriage house. She was linked Mary to Beth the carriage house. She was going to be hired to take care of the carriage house. We don't know what that means because there is no carriage but house. We are totally down with that. Yeah, if you want to hire me to f take care of the carriage house, just let me know. Um, but, I wonder if the library has a carriage house. I don't know. Maybe. We'll have to find out. No. Okay, anyway. Um, we were told that her name is Sarah. She was married to John, and she died in 1912, and she was linked to the carriage house in some way or another. Um, and... There used to be a carriage house where they made carriages here in town, and it was owned by someone who had a son named John who was married to somebody named Sarah, only she died in 1921. So we may have a dyslexic ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely she's here in the store almost all the time, mm -hmm. and she kind of watches over us. So I'm wondering if she answered the phone. Oh, maybe. So that was that. You, this, you know, long rambling thing <laughs> is our ghost so, may answer the phone if you call. We, yeah. Um, anyway, if somebody names Sarah, just, <laughs> just leave a message. She'll get it to us. I'm not sure how, but she'll get it to us. Um, so do you want to talk about what happened to you during the seance? No. Really? <laughs> I get nothing. I get absolutely nothing. She, well, they started the whole thing, just leading up to it, there was, she was going to bring possibly a horn that I think was supposed to blow on its own or something, and... Um, but her spirit guide told her not to bring it because right. there was, but there, she was worried a lot about of unrest. Things flying through the air, uh, the table moving, levitating. Um, so the, I was just a little bit concerned. I'm also much more of a skeptic as far as this thing than Mary Beth is. I believe. Mary Beth believes wholeheartedly. I sometimes believe and then I... Uh, common sense. not And it's not necessarily common sense, but... Um, I don't know what to call it without offending, and I'm not meaning to. Um, anyway. Reality sets in. Right. A more scientific yes. mind takes over and says that it can't be possible. Um, so I really, really, really want it to be real. Anyway, she starts off the whole thing by saying that, oh, yeah, the last time she did this, somebody tried to possess her, and her way of getting rid of it was to vomit. So she might vomit. This is in our store. <laughs> and Mary Beth and I was like, yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> please, please, because no vomit. You don't get paid if you vomit. <laughs> um, so we got her a bucket. <laughs> she didn't There vomit. was no it's vomit. Okay. It's she okay. Didn't have to vomit. No vomiting. Um, no exorcism. However, when she was talking, at one point, we had, there were a lot of people in the store, so we had the air conditioning going. And at one point when the air conditioning was off, I did get a very cold feeling in the ball, the small of my back. It was almost like somebody was sticking a, an icicle into my back and it was just the cold was spreading out over my... It was very strange. Um, I felt And nothing. it was just... It was not like I had cold air blowing on my back because it was more from the inside out and it was spreading almost like my body was being frozen a little. Not, but not that drastic. Um, so that, that was my... Yeah. So I felt This sweet. was Mary, Mary Beth Gus. <laughs> This is Mary Beth's coping mechanism. She goes just, to sleep. We are. We went to I an opening. Day. It was very, several years ago, a long, long time ago. We went to opening day at Yankee Stadium, um, and inevitably, opening day baseball season in this area 
it's freezing cold. It can be 90 degrees the day before, but opening day will be snowing and freezing. <laughs> Marybeth had on so many layers. She was like a little, <laughs> little kid in the snowsuit where she can't move because she's got so many layers on. We were sitting, if you are familiar at all with Yankee Stadium, uh, we were way back in the bleachers. Um, and we did get a little bit of sun on us at one point. It was it was one of the colder, it coldest was, I have but been. But 38? Yeah, it was 39 cold. degrees. Just it was to really... sit in, with your feet on concrete and right. with the wind blowing around the stadium. And it, it was just not really fit for a human. And I look over. She's asleep. <laughs> I can see that. I am so cold. I don't even think I could have slept if I wanted to. <laughs> I was just so focused on being cold. And there's my best. She's asleep. This is her coping mechanism. That's what I do. So. However, it was just, I didn't really fall asleep. I just dozed a little bit. It was It was just, I was, was very tired. And she was relaxed. It Sarah was, was relaxing her because Sarah yeah. was behind me. But I had some, at one point, Jen said, I had a woman behind me too. Um, but, but then that she, was as far she as never I elaborated on it. No. And she said our dad was there. But um, Evidently our dad comes and hangs out yeah. at the store. Oh, and he likes to pet the dogs. That was, that was so nice. Because she said that uh, dad comes to the store. Um, and he likes to sit and pet the dogs and play with the dogs, which. And when, when he was alive, nice. my, the dogs would run to say hello to him and Drew always went and put her head in and his lap. Dad was just, he's, he was such a restful person. Yes. No startled movements, no fast movements, or anything like that. And he didn't gush over the dogs or anything like that. And he, it's not that he didn't like them. It was just very subtle. And all of a sudden you realize that dad's sitting there petting whatever animal happens to be near him. Right. Um, Animals always loved him. He always claimed he hated them because he was still taking care of them all. Um, but uh, So true. I think it's kind of nice that Dad comes and pets Yeah, dogs. I think so, too. So. Anyway, enough. Okay. Um, oh, so we Questions. mentioned that we have the Ravelry page, the Crafty Toads, and there's a questions section of it, and we actually have gotten a couple questions. So... Um, the first one is from dun, dun, dun. her Ravelry name is CD3756. She didn't come up with a specific question, but she's kind of um, envious because we're always talking about all the local yarn shops we have near us. And we are very lucky because New Jersey has a ton. New Jersey is a relatively small state. And we have a ton of knitting stores. We do. We have a lot. Um, some smaller. I mean, and they range all over the place. Some that are just dealing with your Joann's and Michael's um, variety, variety yarn. of yarns. And, and then your much higher ends. And, and we have some that are really kind of boutique-y. And smaller in size, but they right. carry really expensive, expensive nice and yarn. indie dyed yarns. And then the others that carry the gamut, the bigger stores. So it's, um Yes. CD three seven five six. We're very lucky. Yes, we are, and we have um, probably three, at least three that are within fifteen minutes driving. Mm. Yeah. So. I have, what is it? Is it Westfield? Twenty five. Sam one. It's like 25, 30 25, minutes. 30 minutes. So. so we have a whole we, bunch. We're kind of smack dab in the middle of the state. Um, not really. Cause yeah. We're, we're, County got, is. Do the... we have more south south of us? I think north is. Uh, north uh, the northwest, okay. So we're kind of smack dab in the middle of the state, so we can just branch out either way. Um, and we still have to go west to see what's out there. And we are very lucky that we get to work with yarn shops. Yeah. So as we sell them, we sometimes do it in trade. We sort of do barter, you know. Mm -hmm. hey, here's your bag. I'm going to take all the yarn in your store. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, okay. So then uh, Boxton asked us... Um, she was so funny because she's like, oh, I have a question. Pick me, pick me. So I picked you. Uh, have you ever dyed your own yarn? And if not, would you consider dyeing your own and possibly selling it in your shop? That kind of goes with the that's whole... That's a very easy question. answer. No. <laughs> well, it kind of goes... Uh, it also goes with the whole having at least three yarn shops within 15 minutes of us and a couple more that are within a half hour. Um, we're not a yarn store and... We're oh, not as far as carrying it, yeah. pretending to be so that um, it's kind of encroaching on their thing. Yeah, even if we did it, I don't. Uh, well, I guess if we dyed our own, we could. That would be, but we would never have any other yarn to complement it. Right. Um, and I think it's kind of like having just um, you're selling something and you have one of it. You know, I'm going to sell stuffed animals, so I have 
one stuffed animal that I'm selling. That doesn't work. You need to have a more variety. and a variety of it. And I have absolutely no interest in dyeing yarn at all. No. I, I find it amazing and I think it's magical the way people do dye yarn and I enjoy listening to them talk about their craft and how they do it um, but I am not going to be one of those people that are going to say oh I can do that I probably could yeah. but it's kind of no. like my food I don't need to know where it, how it comes from nope I like um, it when you deliver it to me I like to, to knit know. it I really I mean that's that's the part I enjoy I, like, right. I enjoy the knitting part of I am it. going I to appreciate your your work yes very and much so. I will turn it into something like this. And, and that's I what love I love to do. The indie dyed yarn. Yes. I, mean, I if if I could knit everything in indie dyed yarn, I would. Yes. Um, I, it's just, and as Mary Beth said, the, like the self striping yarns, um, the cozy knitter and um, yarn enabler. They did dye another day podcast. How they get the stripes to work exactly the way they're supposed to do with all the different size socks, and then I. Don't magic. Know. I, I really like knowing that it's magic. Yeah. That's yeah. my that's my thing. Yeah. So, no, um, I, I really don't see us dying yarn any time in the future. A, we have no time to do it, and B, it's just not something that we're interested in. So, I just, you know, see these 3756, your name is Cheryl. Oh, I, that's very nice I, of you. I, I, made, I made the extra step of checking your, your profile. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> And she also came in today because I just think it's funny. Um, oh, everybody was asking if we're okay, that um, why we have a podcast. So they, it was nice that they checked in to make sure we were okay. Um, but then she saw people selling our bags on Facebook. <laughs> she was she was all set to defend our honor to see it because she was checking to see if we had patented the grommet of our bags because this, this company called Yarn Pop is selling our bags. Um, Please don't pop. defend our yeah, honor. Yarn pop did it first. <laughs> we defend checked. yarn pop's honor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we checked. They did it long before we did. Right. So, um, um, it's... so no, we haven't patented it. I don't believe yarn pop, as far as I know, has patented it either. But they are much bigger than we are. They sell in Michaels um, and Joanne's and uh, other places. Um, but it was it was sweet because when I explained it to her that we don't pattern it, that she says, "Oh, okay, I'm ready to defend." Oh, that's so <laughs> nice. Thank so you so much, Thank Cheryl. You, Cheryl. Um, and it's, it's so nice of you to stand up for us. But uh, no, we are not the only ones that do it, and um, I'm I'm almost positive that Yarn Pop has doing been doing it for a very long time yeah. before we did. So, um, I may as in fact come up with the idea. They might have. Who knows? Uh, there are other ones that use it as well. So yeah. it's it's. Um, but we put our spin on it because I don't want to say our fabric is better. Yes, it um, is. But our fabric is better. It's so much prettier. And it's prettier. It's very um, pretty. When we got done the 150 bags, which we it was all white twill with the person's logo on it, and it looked really pretty, and then we put different fabric inside. But we had such a good time when we got done because we got to use all the pretty fabric. Right. And we got to make things that were different. And it's just, I love making things out of And we have fabric. so much fun picking the outside fabric and the inside fabrics to go with it. And then making sure that the zipper coordinates. And, um, yeah, no, it's that's it's, part of it. It's all part of it. So, okay. Thank you so much for your questions. And if anybody so, else wants to know anything about us, put it on the thread. It's a fairly easy found thread. It's called Ask the Toads. Okay. So, anything Maybe you want hates us call it being called the Toads. So I try and do it as awesome as I can. Yeah, I, we're kind of, I'm kind as of moving often into it. as I can, as opposed to as awesome as I can. Well, you do it fairly awesomely, awesome, too. So, okay. Um, we're looking at our notes to see where yes. we are. Oh, um, podcasts, podcasts that we've been watching. We have been, while we're sewing, we like to play podcasts. Sometimes... More often than not, we have to play music because we pay too much attention to the podcast. We are not allowed. To, to we're sewing. not allowed to do knitting we're, podcasts anymore. Well, when we're not so pressured, we can do it. Like you know, maybe this week we can have them going. But when you're we're pressured and we're trying to meet a deadline and we have to make so many bags a day, we found that things go much slower when we're stopped reason. and we're looking to see what people are making. <laughs> I get so interested with what people are doing and making and things like that that I don't pay attention to my sewing machine and that and it's kind of hard to my hear finger. over the sewing ma machine so that so. you stop the sewing so that you can actually hear one part. So, yes. Anyway, we are um we tend not to do the knitting podcast while we're working. But we have um, audio podcasts going sometimes, and one of the ones that uh, the one we're highlighting this week 
is called Myths and Legends. And do you have anything else on it other than Myths and Legends? She's gonna, Helen's going to look this up quickly because we should know this beforehand. We're so prepared. Mm. We're awesome. See? Awesome. <laughs> what he does is, and I will I tell you who he is name. in just a moment. Um, he takes a different myth or legend from around the world and researches it. And once a week he puts up a podcast and tells you the story behind the myths. And it's really, really interesting because you find out that some of these myths that you thought were, you know, from one origin are actually from China or something like that. It's really cool. Jason Weiser. He's very, very interesting. He's very into the myths that he's talking about. Um, and it's just, it's really, really cool to listen to. So if you have this. Here's the, um, go ahead. The synopsis. The blurb. Uh, Jason Weiser tells stories from myths, legends, and folklore that have shaped cultures throughout history. Some, like the stories of Aladdin, King Arthur, and Hercules, are stories you think you know, but with surprising origins. Others are stories you might not have heard, but really should. All the stories are sourced from world folklore, and retold, but retold for modern ears. These are stories of wizards, knights, vikings, dragons, princesses, and kings from the time when the world beyond the map was a dangerous and wonderful place. So, seriously, as far as I'm concerned... Done. You can't go wrong there. And he does, I mean, in-depth research, and he right. goes and finds all the different sources and kind of pushes them all together into one telling um, so that we had to stop playing that one, too, because we were paying too much attention. <laughs> also, he does, every week, he does a different monster or creature. That's right. That he tells yeah. you about. There's one that will lure you into dark, um, dark cellars and ply you with cake and beer. That's what they do. And there's another one where it's like the blue-eyed tree frog. If he approaches you on a dark road in the middle of the night, don't go near him. For God's God sakes, do not stop. I'm pretty sure I didn't need that <laughs> qualification, but okay, good to know. Because I'm going to start a stop for a blue-eyed tree, tree frog, frog in the middle of a street in New Jersey in the middle <laughs> of the night. You know, that's... Um, but uh, he has really interesting information that he does, that he tells. And it's like listening to your parents read you a bedtime story. Um you know, it's, some of them are a little bloodier than others. When he goes yes. into the North Norse uh, gods, it's a little. They were a brutal bunch. Yes, they were. They were really a brutal yeah. bunch. However, he sometimes starts off with, um, "This may not be for the children," and then you know you're in for a really bloody. Yeah. <laughs> A little violence. Yes, yeah. uh, but if you actually, if you go back and read the Grimm's fairy tales. Or even Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales. They were not named Grimm for... I mean, they were named Grimm for a reason. But they are... I mean, they're bloody. Yeah. It's like the TV show. They were supposed to... I mean, they were used as cautionary tales to keep, you know, people from, from doing things... Going they into the woods to, right? or whatever. Um, and it's just... They're, they're yeah. violent. Very violent. But... Um, it's, uh, we discovered a we new did. podcast yesterday. Right. Actually, she is the one that made our yarn, Sweet Sparrow Knits. Um, well, the, the yarn is Sweet Sparrow Yarns. And her Instagram is Julie Rose Sews. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Julie. and She's from New Jersey. She just started a podcast mm -hmm. this past weekend. And her first episode is up. It's under Sweet Sparrow Knits. On YouTube. On YouTube. And... Um, it's a lot of fun to watch. It's 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 so cool to see somebody else joining the podcast group. Yes. And she's got um, two absolutely gorgeous chocolate Siamese cats. And um, it's it's fun to see because we love her yarn so much. We, we bought the first games and love the yarn. And we love her reasoning behind her choice of colorways. Right. Um, so that we felt kindred spirits to her, and it was nice to see her podcast. Yes. Also, she showed some yarn that she's going to be making her husband socks out of, the Dickens. Oh, my God, yes. I, I really I want that yarn. yarn yeah. I need the Dickens yarn. So, Julie, if you're watching, we will be visiting you soon. Yeah. Okay. So those are our podcasts that we've been watching. Um, we have been doing a lot of late nights at the store, so um, not as much time watching as we would like, yeah. but we have a lot of sitting weeks. on the couch and falling asleep. Yeah, but we have caught up on a couple of things as far as watching. So Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, big Game of Thrones fan. Me, 
her. Not so much, but she watches it. I watch it. It's interesting. Besides, it's what everybody's talking about. Yeah. And we didn't do The Walking Dead, so it's kind of nice to be right. in the know. Yeah. Um, and I'm watching as people are watching. Yes. We watch the next day, but it's at least we're current. Not I know. There two are years behind. We're usually two years behind. Breaking Bad. Haven't seen. Nope. Might be interested, no. After, After seeing Aaron Plow. Yeah, yeah. But the Game of Thrones was very good. Very, very good, but violent, bloody, and um, very absolutely Game of no regard for human life no. whatsoever. It's really, I kind of go into it with, oh, who's dying this week? And there will be a lot. Yeah. Who's Ramsey Bolton going to kill this week? George R. R. Martin will kill just about everybody. Yep. You think they're an important character? They're dead. I am interested... If you put all the violence and everything aside, the story is very interesting. Yes. The politics, which I'm not into normally, are very interesting. And he has a healthy respect for women. Yes. I'm very interested in the female characters. Because the men do not. The men no. try and take advantage of women all well, the time. I'm, I'm very intrigued this season with... For once, Sansa. Sansa is coming into her coming own. Coming into her own. And, um, Danny is fantastic. Yeah, and even Cersei, she's a little disturbed. But um, she's a strong woman. Yep. And, I, and, I, and I appreciate that. So. And Arya is coming through. Yeah. Love um, Arya. So, yeah, no, it's... Yeah, I mean, the only ones that are sticking around are the, the females. So. Yeah. Um, it's cool. Yeah. Very cool. I read the first five books. Still waiting for the sixth. You can just keep waiting. I pretty much think I am. However, um, I am. I'm. I'm liking watching it, seeing what, not knowing and ahead not of time what happens. Happen. So, I for the like first that. couple of seasons, she and my two brothers were much more in the know than the rest of the world is. In fact, <laughs> my youngest brother <laughs> gets very annoyed because he kept the red wedding, red red wedding under his belt until it actually showed on the air. He never hinted or anything like that. And, you know, Jon Snow comes back to life, and five seconds later, it's all over Facebook. And he, he had a very funny Facebook post that was a little obscenity-laced, so I will not put it. But <laughs> It was along it the was lines very of... unappreciative of people not waiting for other people to see it. Jon is a bartender, so and he works Sunday nights. So and that once people are done, they come in and talk, you know, and um, they're done watching it, and they have to come in and tell him what, everything that happened. And not even thinking. I think it's just, I think half the time it's just. Stream know, of conscious. You're not thinking that you're ruining it for somebody. And not realizing that he hasn't seen it yet because he's been working since right. 11 o'clock in the morning. So, um, anyway. He's just in if the you dark watch now something like us. that, do not go into your local bar and tell the bartender right, right. away because chances are pretty Give him good. 24 hours to see it. I haven't seen it yet. So, if you have not seen Game of Thrones yet, cool show. No. But, bloody and violent. Go yeah, in knowing that. Oh my god. Yes. All right. We also and, and very rapey. Yeah. Which we, I don't like. We watched the path with Aaron Paul. That's good. Which is why we're saying that Breaking Bad may be on the horizon at some point because he's so good in this mm -hmm. that I'm I'd be it's interested a, to see what The path is doesn't. on Hulu. Yes, it's a Hulu show. So if you have Hulu, you can watch it. And I'm pretty sure all the episodes are still available. But um, the. The, it's it's based around a movement that people outside the movement refer to as a cult, but and the people who are inside the movement, and you're actually getting to see um, from the inside, a, right, an up close view of what it would be like to be part of one of these movements. So it's it's really very very interesting. It's a cult. It's also shot in um, upstate New York. I don't know if it's actually shot there or not, but it's supposed to be upstate New York in during the, the fall. In fall so that it's gorgeous. Just yeah. It is absolutely gorgeous. If you're from the East Coast, you know that the fall here um, is beautiful. Yeah. So um, looking at the trees and the places that they live, it's it's really, really nice to see. Oh, who's it? Hugh Dancy? Is he the... Yes. He's a little... He's very good, but he's kind of a... A little disturbed. A little disturbed. A little disturbed. But it's, it's an interesting show. Very good show. So, so that's uh, there's that. And then we started Onto watching... Eye Candy. Well, we started watching... <laughs> Okay, so we start watching this night, the Night Manager, which is a British show. Yes, we have seen two, two episodes. Episodes, yeah. I think, with Hugh Laurie and yep, Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. 
That would be the eye candy. That's candy. Yes. Tom Hiddleston. Beautiful. Beautiful man. Very nice to watch. Yes. And very good at what he does. Yes, because he can span the funny to yeah. the... Very understated. Yes. No, but he's he's just really good. Um, and then we also found Doc Martin, another British show, um, set in a little seaside town in England. Very small town. Everybody knows what everybody else is doing. Kind of like you know, where, where we, we live. live. <laughs> we were talking about just you know saying you know if we ever get to hire somebody and you know would we hire somebody in town you know somebody local that kind of thing and having just watched an episode of Doc Martin where he let go of somebody in town and the backlash that went with it was just like yeah that no. would be what it would be like. <laughs> so, well, we were is I went um, towards the end of the day. Mary Beth was going to go off one way and buy lavender, and I was going to go off the other way and buy jam. And I went first because she was manning the booth, and then I was going to come back. And we only had 10, 15 minutes to do it. I had to walk half a block. And doing this in the town that we live in and work in and everything, I did. it took me half an hour. It did. It literally took her half an hour. Because and it was, she Mary Beth's looking at me when I came back, and I'm like, I met everybody. And I got stopped every. I go two steps and I get stopped by somebody. And it's not a bad thing. It's just it's kind it's of really nice a nice that, thing that you, you walk know. through and people know you and they talk to you and yeah. And I mean, when we were sitting manning the booth, almost all the local people stopped by to talk to us. Um, and so, somebody across the street yelled at who had a booth across the street yelled at me at one point. It's like everybody's stopping at your booth. I'm like, I live here. They all know me. <laughs> It's 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 good. It's it's nice. it's one of the really great perks about living in a small town. But Dark Martin kind of that small town kind right. of reminds me of Keyport. A lot. It reminds me a lot of Keyport. So we so do not have the gorgeous that gorgeous view, but we, we do have a lovely view. view. We really do. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm mm-hmm. reading. I am reading Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Is it good? It is. If I could just stay awake, and that's not a testament on the book. That's just me. Um, but yes, it is. It's very good. So we're going to have to read it and go see the movie. Right. That's yeah. why I'm reading it. Because I thought it was something totally different from what it is. And then I saw the preview of the movie and I'm like, oh. That actually looks that good. That looks really good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm still in the beginning stages of it, but it's good. I am reading True Believer by Jane Haddam. She writes a series of detective novels about Gregor Demarkian who is an Armenian detective living in Philadelphia and uh, she's been writing about him for 30 years now Um, and this is I think one of her newer ones it's one I haven't read very often she revolves around a holiday so there's one that revolves around Halloween and there's one that revolves around Valentine's Day and that was her niche for a while but then she kind of went on from there Um, yes it is very good, but like you, make it through maybe a page before I'm asleep. Yeah. So which makes it difficult because you don't retain it, right? Um, and you don't get as invested in the book. And it's going to take me a year and a half to read this if I read and it I have one to page st- at a time. I have to get back into reading it well in the morning, right after my shower. So, oh, that watching I did. I finished Daredevil. Oh, you did Daredevil and Jessica. Jones. And I just finished Jessica Jones. So I finished watching those, but Helen wasn't really interested in those, so I was Not watching those in the morning. At all. Um, after my shower, but um, they were good. If you like that kind of thing, they actually were very, very good. And um, I'm I'm totally invested for season three of Daredevil and season two of Jessica Jones. David Tennant was in Jessica Jones. Yes, he was. He was not the tenth Doctor at all. Uh, like he was the very tenth much not the tenth <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> However, he was exceptionally good at being bad. Um, but he was he was really, really, really good. Um. But yeah, he was not a very nice person. And we just finished reading The Lavender Garden. By... I don't know. I will put it in as the show right. notes. It was a book for our book club, and we both enjoyed it. Yes, yes and we did. Enough to want to read uh, some of her other books. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, no, we had, we had our book club last week, and we had a really good discussion about it because it revolves around um, the French Resistance in the world, the Second World War, and part of it takes place in 1944, and part of it takes place in the current time, and... There's a French chateau. Which is always nice. And an old English manor. Right, called Blackmore. I remember yeah. that. Um, 
So it's it's great to I love reading about it old houses. It's all our our, our yes. Niches, so. Yes. And a fun story. So. Had a little bit of a mystery to it. Um not much, but there was a little bit. Yeah. So a couple of twisty turns. It was good. It was very yeah. good. So. so yes. And next we are reading A Man Called Ove. Is that the name yes, of it? Yes, I think so. Okay. That's our next book club. Right. Cool. So, so if you want to join in our book club, Man Called Ove. There you go. We, we will... have a thread on Ravelry for what are you reading. And if so you come read... tell us what you're reading because it... we love to yeah. find new authors and new books. So if you've read something good, please put it in. It's it's a it's um and share it with everybody else. So I am looking at this and I think we're at like an hour and a half. Good lord, we've been chattering on. All right, well, there's a lot of editing. So. so. That's That'll be much. interesting. Yeah. So, raw footage, an hour and a half. Let's see what we get it down to. Okay. <laughs> and here's the real challenge. How long will it take, take me to upload, to to upload and <laughs> edit this? Because hopefully it will not take me as long as... Uh, last time was not bad. Episode no, 5 was fast, not bad. Yeah. Um, episode 3 was the one I think that took... Well, longest. and I think everybody was having problems uploading to YouTube that week. I know, but editing it... I, oh. Hi, welcome to the Crafty Tavits. We heard we that, heard that over, and over and over again. <laughs> so, hopefully we'll be better this time. Um, actually, the last two times were much better. I think I'm getting slight hanging out of it. Yeah. So. Good? Good. I think we are done. I think we have chewed your ear off long enough. I think we have. So, enjoy this beautiful quilt behind us. Yes. We will hopefully see you next week. And hopefully. With lots cast on. Two sweaters, two sweaters and, and one sweater ordered. ordered. That's so. our plan. That is the plan. Yeah. Happy and knitting. We will have um, lots of progress and on the shawls. And hopefully we will have bags in the shop ready for purchase. That we can show you because we've yep. got a new design. It's yep. really cool. It looks really kind of funky and cool. So yeah. Excited to share. All right. We will see you guys later. See you next week. Happy knitting. <laughs>